So it's been a year and it looks like the YouTube shouty men were right. Pokemon Sun and Moon looks bad. <laughs> It's just a dumb school comedy anime. <laughs> and it's nowhere near as intense as Pokemon XY was. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Hello and welcome to the Canopy Effect. This is an animated spotlight on Pokemon the series Sun and Moon. This is actually my second piece on Pokemon Sun and Moon. In September 2016, I addressed the controversy regarding the character designs, describing the advantages of simplifying the designs and how the series as a whole would benefit from new changes to the visual formula. By making designs that are easier to animate, the show could have more moving parts, allowing for more types of visual stories to be told. For example, one of my favourite early episodes was one with hardly any dialogue at all, as the three starters expressed themselves through animation with lots of squashing and stretching. Pokemon Sun and Moon doesn't take long to reach its stride, although that depends on where you believe its stride actually is. With the new character designs, Pokemon is able to more effectively carry comedic episodes by adding new elements of visual humour. There's been this trend for the past 20 years that every episode needs some kind of battle or at least a tussle with Team Rocket, but Sun and Moon has felt much more comfortable with having episodes that involve a few shenanigans and silly moments. What was commonly referred to as filler episodes that you should just skip in previous seasons are now a part of the core appeal. Which is great because the insistence that you should skip anything without an important battle in Pokemon always annoyed me to begin with. One of my favourite examples of this was in everyone's favourite baseball episode, episode 28. Simple designs can be a blank canvas. Once you've broken down a character into a few distinctive characteristics, you can go all out with switching up the style as long as those characteristics are retained. So this awesome, sparking Gigabot swing can have the freedom to have all of this extra line work without looking off-putting. With simple, loose character designs, much more becomes possible when trying to create fun scenes like this. The impressive shot with Kiawe pitching was animated by a guy called Masaki Iwane. If there's one name to remember when it comes to Pokemon, it's him. Long running anime series can be a pain. It needs to be a tight, reliable schedule with episodes being released endlessly for years, and enough animator manpower to have several episodes in production at any given time. Or just one guy. Misaki Iwana has been famous for animating entire episodes by himself for years now, but his Sun and Moon episodes have consistently been some of the most impressive even when he's the only one providing key animation for them. Episodes with just one animator are a rarity to begin with, but episodes at this level of polish and frequency is something incredible. Iwane's best moments in X and Y were his battles, but thanks to the new redesign and animation philosophies within Sun and Moon, we've seen what he can do with character animation and lighter moments. In fact, we saw it in the first episode, as he was the one that animated the ending credits. He was also responsible for the proper introduction of Team Rocket as the solo key animator of episode 3 in which they discover Mimikyu. It's easy to dismiss the effect individual animators have over the narrative, but the way Team Rocket is portrayed visually emphasises their shitlord desperation in a way that previous series haven't quite achieved in the same way. Iwane was also responsible for key animating episodes 9, 15, 21, 27, 33, 39, 44 and 50 all by himself. And unlike in previous seasons, these episodes don't necessarily feature battles. 
In fact, most of them feature little more than the regular conflict with Team Rocket, and the focus of these episodes is often on expressive character animation. Even in an episode that involves a battle with an Ultra Beast, it's this extended jump rope cut that features the most unique movement on screen at once, so much so that even Iwane pushed himself beyond his limits. But even with more character-centric episodes with expressive and energetic animation, Pokemon Sun and Moon hasn't abandoned battles at all. They may be less frequent, but when they battle, it's always a good one. The battle between Brock and Kiawe during the trip back to Kanto represents one of the coolest moments within the series. With many shots being animated by mecha animator Aito Ohashi, who has been responsible for many action-packed moments in my favourite show Gun the Bill Fighters, the framing and structure of this particular battle is stunning and successfully shows how terrifying battling a Steelix really can be. In the same episode, animator Isao Namba created standout scenes within the battle between Ash and Misty, where Pikachu takes on a Mega Gyarados. Purely through the animation in these battles, we can see how both Brock and Misty have grown since their last appearances. It also gives us a great excuse to see Mega Pokemon in action once again, after Sun and Moon's continued reliance on Z-moves instead. Yet with all the changes over the years, one animation philosophy remains consistent, and that's camera zooms. The idea that a great shot starts with a character's face and then pulls out dramatically as the character continues to play with that sense of depth. Sometimes it even looks like the camera is just narrowly avoiding being hit as they wave their arms. This isn't something unique to Pokemon, but it's something that Pokemon never doesn't do, and is made famous by Masaki Iwane's attentiveness towards creating a sense of depth in his battles. Even in Pokemon Generations, which is created by Wit Studio, Production IG, and Signal MD, there is a shot like this in an episode produced at Signal MD, but storyboarded by Pokemon Sun and Moon's director, Daiki Tomias. Although, even with these recognisable qualities, it would be ignorant to say that Pokemon hasn't really changed that much. In fact, it's currently in a huge state of flux, with there being no singular idea of what the Pokemon anime or its protagonist should look like. Even when the character designs were changed in the Sun and Moon series, the film took an entirely different approach from both X and Y and Sun and Moon, creating a brand new aesthetic. And the upcoming film in 2018, created by both OLM and Wit Studio, features Moe designs by Shizue Kaneko, known for If Her Flag Breaks and Panda Peace. She even drew this picture of Ash to celebrate the announcement. In 2018, Ash's TV design will probably change again, as will his film design again in 2019. Starting with Pokemon I Choose You, the part of Studio OLM that handles the TV anime, OLM Team Cuttle, has taken over the films as well. But even though it's now being handled by the same animation producer, the aesthetics and even the stories between the TV and film versions have diverged more than they ever have before. Pokemon Sun and Moon has an advantage in that it can feature a lot more exciting animation even within a tight TV production schedule, whilst the films can feature more detail and use 3D environments that would be better appreciated on the big screen. Each of them uses team leader Hiroyuki Kato's dedication towards modernising animation production in their own unique way. Thanks for watching the Kenpo Effect! I couldn't figure out how to include this fact in the video, but they created a 3D model of the Pokemon school in Sun and Moon as a reference for the backgrounds there, so it always feels consistently real. Anyways, if you want to support the channel, please consider checking out the Kenpo Effect Patreon. For $1 you get to read my monthly updates where I reflect on everything that's come out and everything that I'm working on. For $3 you get to read all the interview translations that have been funded. There's currently a load of interviews about the backgrounds of your name on there. For $5 you get access to commentary videos, including a commentary video on this video where I'll talk more about Pokemon animation, and for $10, $15, and $25 you get different special rewards and you get a special thank you. But for now I'd like to give a huge thank you to all these incredible people for supporting the channel. 
In particular, I'd like to thank the active Austin Hardwick, the impossible Isaac Wu, the fantastic Frogkun, literally my own mother, the humane Hamad, the appreciated Alboreo, the meaningful Mike Tamborelli, and the jeweled Jacob Gard. That's all for 2017. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.